Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 2% Better Health Podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Bennett, and today I'm very excited to be talking to Lauren Ruffer. She is Miss Biohacker, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> uh, that's how I found her on Instagram, actually. She puts out such amazing information that's not your usual information. Uh, you know, eat this, not that, or, you know, burn calories, calories in, calories out. It's so far beyond that. And I'm excited because today we get to touch on so many things from, you know, seasonal eating to epigenetics to how our environment, you know, really helps manage what our genes are doing inside of our body. So Laura, thank you so much for taking the time today and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> what, so what got you into to biohacking? I mean, sometimes I guess that word is a little bit uh, these days, people sometimes look, I don't, I want to say they look down on biohacking, but it's hard to understand what a biohacker does yeah. and what your goal is. Like what got you into this? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, most people connected with something negative. So yeah. Yeah. What? you're a biohacker and actually there's a Netflix series about it. It's called biohacking and it has actually nothing to do with biohacking. Mm -hmm. So biohacking is for me to optimize the body to an optimal level. So even if you think you're healthy, there's always something you could do better. This is my explanation about it. And how I got into it, um, when I was 15, I was very unhealthy. I smoked. Yeah, I smoked. <laughs> it's actually so hard to say that. And I, I was drinking a lot and partying a lot. And I had a very unhealthy lifestyle. And then I started to... Yeah, research a little bit about nutrition and how to optimize my nutrition because I mainly eat junk food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my day started with bread and Nutella and um, yeah, or pizza every day. And then I also was on the pill and I gained a lot of weight. And then at one point I just said, I want to change something about my nutrition. And I did it the wrong way put it that way. I, I started to reduce my calories to 800 calories a day. I over-exercised. I, I lost a lot of weight, but it wasn't healthy at all. I, I disrespected my circadian rhythm. I, I, I went to the gym at 10 p.m., something like that, and it wasn't healthy. And then finally, um, like um, two years ago, I started to optimize my health and not working against my body anymore. And I started to go to bed early and to go outside in the sun and spend my day um, under natural light as much as possible for me. And then I also started to study nutritional sciences, which I'm still doing. And I also did a lot of courses on um, epigenetics and toxins, micronutrients, um, biochemistry, etc and um, I also come from a farm so my parents own a little farm we have um, um, chickens goats and we make everything from scratch so I basically was a biohacker when I was a child I ate organ meats and uh, herbs and all the healthy stuff and then I suddenly stopped but now I'm back on my yeah way on my on my way back to health I could say that's yeah. awesome. That's great. Well, I'm, what I mean, I feel like everyone, before we recognize the true importance of doing these things, there's always a speed bump in the way when it comes to our health or something yeah. along those lines. So it's really cool at a young age, you were able to turn your life into something super healthy. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. So, yeah. you know, everyone wants to know priorities, right? They want to know, well, what should I eat or how should I eat? Or what's the most important thing I should focus on? So if you had a client coming to you saying, okay, where, where do I start, Laura? You know, I feel like I'm ready to do some things to change my life. What would you suggest? I think there's not a one fits all. It, it, it's always depending on, on their lifestyle, but I think most people only focus on their nutrition, mm -hmm. but they forget the rest of it they they disrespect the circadian rhythm they go to bed at 1 a.m in the night and spend their day under toxic blue light all day and this is actually the first thing i change when i have a client and Excellent. they always look at me and say what what is wrong with my life i mean this is not my room <laughs> at <the> <laughs> <friend> house. <laughs> so please ignore the blue light in the background <laughs> and um 
So, um, yeah, I, I really start with lightning conditions, going back, spending more time in nature, um, reconnect with nature. Um, then I ask my clients, when was the last time you spent um, a full day outside in nature or when you walked barefoot on the ground outside? And most people can't even remember. Mm. And this is really shocking. So how disconnected we live from nature. And I mean, it's just natural going, going back to our roots and just implementing some yeah, ancestral hacks in our modern world. And um, this is the way we can get healthy again. In my opinion. That's great. Absolutely. It's this, it's this interesting concept of what, like, we think we knew better. We thought we knew better, right? That we thought that we could fool mother nature. We thought that we could make better lighting. We thought that we could make better heating and better air conditioning. And, you know, just all these things that we thought we could do better. And I am a hundred percent a believer that that is that disconnection from nature is the number one thing that is destroying health these days. And it's, 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 it's easy to say, go back into nature, but for people who have been so disconnected for so long, you know, what, what do you say? Is it seeing the sunrise? Is it blocking the blue light at night? Is it touching the surface of the earth? Where, where do you go with that? Yes, I, I, I totally agree with you. And I start, I mean, you, you, you have to know where they come from. They're mm. so disconnected uh, for us. It's so unbelievable, but um, they, they just watch Netflix every, every day and they never see the sunrise or the sunset. And they, they spend the whole day inside. They never go outside. So I, I say, please try to go outside at least for half an hour and a day. And then they, they feel better. They, they realize, oh man, it's so good for me. It's so good for my health. And then they can increase it. But they're mostly they're really overwhelmed by all the changes. So I just start to change the, um, yeah, the reconnecting with nature first, and then I can go into the details. So like hormones and nutrition, of course, mm. it's a big topic and we need to optimize that as well. But first of all, we need to optimize the basics like sleep, reconnecting with nature, having a real food diet. And most people come from a very unhealthy diet. They just eat junk food or go to the bakery in the morning, grab their coffee, smoke a cigar, drink alcohol on the weekend. And I said, you don't have to make a 180 degree shift. You just can start with one meal in the morning, optimize your first meal in the morning. And then we can talk about, I talk about adding things, Mm -hmm. not just leaving out the junk food, but I say, add some things in that will make you feel good. And you don't you, you won't crave that junk food anymore because your body needs, you, your body knows what it needs and your body will tell you that, that it's so good for you to implement all those changes, but not at, at once, you know, it's too much for most people. Sure, sure. So that's a great point because sometimes people know, right? That's like, oh, they've heard they should do this and that. And it's how to implement the changes, how to, yeah. how to establish the habits. And mm-hmm. so I think that's a really important point for, for people to hear. It's that it's not necessarily about taking away and about, about doing some sort of a 21 day cleanse, right? Like it's about adding in sure. the healthy stuff. And then mm-hmm. as you add in the healthy stuff, you are going to start to say, wait a second, I don't want that donut first thing in the morning or no, the blue light at night actually viscerally makes me kind of like cringe. You know, it doesn't feel good to me anymore. So start by just adding the good as opposed to worrying about taking away the bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And most people, I mean, I also have a lot of friends and I guess you too, that that they, they always say, why do you feel so good all of the time? And they, they don't realize that they could feel much better. But mm-hmm. at the point when they get really sick and Ill and have problems, then they start to question their lifestyle. And then I start to, hmm, what, what could I change? And, and I say, it's, it's so simple, but it's also not so simple. <laughs> and right. yeah, right. to oh, go ahead. What did you say? Oh, I said, no, go ahead, go ahead. You said we we're saying it's, it's simple, but it's not simple in the yeah, way that when people, when people start to want to make those changes, like they ask me what I've changed. And I mean, I honestly could list a hundred things, but I didn't do it. It took me five years 
to change so many little things, right? As opposed to yeah. doing it all at once, because so, otherwise it's overwhelming. It's a journey. It's not. It's not like oh, there's a destination, and or or people ask me, can you can you give me a nutrition plan? I said no. It's not working like that. You have to implement small changes over time so that you can make a whole new lifestyle, and it will be a whole new lifestyle. And you can't change your lifestyle in in one week. It's just not possible. And yeah, most people just want a quick fix and they say, oh, I want to do a choose a week <laughs> only in choose. And I say, this is the worst thing you could do. It's not healthy and it's not, you have to think long-term and not just a quick fix. This is not what's, what's, what brings back your health. Right. The, um, my, my least favorite word is protocol, right? Like just give me a protocol or just give me just just tell me exactly what to do. It's like, no, I, when I'm coaching clients, I need you to understand why a little bit, at least why you're doing this. I can't, I mean, sure. Could I, 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 one of my least favorite things, I don't know, this might be kind of revealing, but one of my least favorite things is giving a nutrition plan, you know, because number, number one, what I eat or those people that say, well, what do you eat? Well, what I eat is going to be different than what you eat because we're all different. Right. So I can't just cut and paste what I eat. And then all of a sudden make that your best nutrition plan. And, and, and it's, it's not about just give me the plan. It's, it is, it's a true lifestyle shift. And it, it has to start in my opinion, with the, the connection to nature, with the connection to sunrise, with the circadian rhythm and the sleep, because that brings about a clarity of thought when people implement that more, it, there's, there's bigger changes in the brain. In my opinion, when people mm -hmm. start getting connected to nature, they start getting their, their circadian rhythm strong and they start to get restorative sleep. So it's almost as if there's a lot of people who are kind of living in a fog right now. Right. And they don't even, they don't know what they don't know and they don't know how much better they can feel. And so step one really is clear the fog out of the brain. Yes, exactly. Or they, or they come and say, which supplement should I take? And I said, it's not about a supplement. Just go back to a real food diet first. And then we can see, okay, you probably need this or you probably need that supplement. It could be beneficial. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the basics first, I always say basics first, and they are so simple and the best thing they're free or yeah, yeah, food is not free, but you, you know what I mean? Nature yeah. is free. Nature Light is free. free. Sleep. Is free. <laughs> Sleep is free. <laughs> and um, so many people have so many huge benefits from just changing, going back to nature, respecting the sleep, respecting their lightning conditions. Mm -hmm. I have to talk to my friend as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know baby steps, right? Baby steps. Um, so let's talk, let's, let's go into food. You know, I, I typically don't talk food a ton because I just feel like it's so polarizing for people. Like I was actually just, I just did an Instagram post. And I was just looking at a couple of people who are arguing about food back and forth. And it's just like, ugh. I find the, the food argument boring in a way because, but I think you've got a really refreshing perspective that it's eat real and eat seasonal. Right. And so can you eat, real, yourself eat seasonal and eat local mm -hmm. if possible, and you will give your body the information it needs, because otherwise you will just give your body confusing information and you, you know, so many nutrition experts out there, they have their opinion and I, I even disagree with some, but I also agree with some parts mm -hmm. of their plans or opinions on things and um, I totally respect that someone has different opinion like you just said they're arguing about being vegan being carnivore there are so many diets but I say everyone could start to implement having local food having real food this is the first thing just one ingredient food and your health will improve so much one ingredient food. That's, that's perfect. Food. The, the other, the, I think what you touched on beautifully too, is the fact that it's food isn't about we we've, I think, um, we've overly simplified food. First off, we overly simplified it into calories. And then the, the next level of nutrition is, if you will, overly simplifies it into carbs, proteins, and fats. When food is, it's not that food is information about our environment. What is happening in our environment? Just like light is information just like touching the earth and grounding and the magnetic field is information about our environment. Our body is continually trying to sense its environment and optimize its function based on that. So talk, how is food a reflection? How is it information for me? You call it information. Yes, I call it information because it's basically 
yeah, altering our genes. Mm. Every bite you eat is altering your genes and either in a good way or in a bad way. So you could see like um, there's the process called methylation. Um, it's epigenetic. So you have your genes and you have your epigenetics and epigenetics is even more than genes because they, um, they control which genes are expressed and which genes are silenced. So, and you want to have your bad genes silenced and you want to have your good genes working. So if someone comes to you and said, yeah, sorry, it's in my family and I'm just a victim of my genes, then you can say, no, that's not true. With your environment and your lifestyle choices, you are altering your genes. And with everybody you eat, with every thought you think, with your sleep, um, with toxins in the air, if you live in a big city, I would get out of there as app. And if you can't move immediately, I mean, it's a big change for some people, then just try to spend more time in, na in nature and support your detoxifying processes in the body, um, etc. And when it comes to food, um, think of junk food. I mean, you become what you eat. The things you eat will be implemented in your body. It, it will be part of you. And do you really want to be made up by, by a burger? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Right, right. I, like a bunch, do you want a bunch of trans fats in your cell membranes? I, I definitely, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Um, I, this is beautiful because I think people hear about their genes, but what I don't think people recognize is that every single one of our cells has the exact same genes, exactly. right? And so like, how do I have a skin cell here and deep in here, I've got a heart cell and over here, a muscle and a muscle cell. How do they know what cell to be and what, what proteins to make and how to express themselves. It's based on the epigenetics of that cell. Exactly. And, and so the way I like to think of it is that we have all these genes and we have this DNA, but there's like little light switches on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And each cell has a certain code of this many lights have to be off. And this mm -hmm. many switches have to be on to be the, the perfect muscle cell or the perfect brain mm -hmm. cell. And those switches can get jumbled and they can get scrambled for people because those switches respond on and off or, uh, or, or, they, or they, they think they need to respond on and off according to different exposures in the environment. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest ways to expose ourselves to our environment is like you said, the food that we eat, what we put into yeah. our bodies. And so we start to eat certain things and our genes start to switch on and off mm -hmm. the wrong way. And when, when a cell does that, I mean, the ultimate manifestation of that is cancer, right? Cells just have yeah. completely jumbled yes. switches. Exactly. There's the so-called tumor suppressor gene. And you want that gene to work because it silences all the cancer genes. So if you probably have a, a high toxic load and your methylation doesn't work properly, you will have problems with those genes, with the tumor suppressor genes. And this could lead to cancer development. And even if you have those cancer genes, then you could still silence them with your nutrition, with your lifestyle, and yeah, people, I mean, every kind of cancer you can think of has to do with epigenetic abnormalities, every kind of cancer. So you can influence it to a very yeah, large part um, yourself with diet, with sleep, with, with lightning. And for example, there's a gene also for melatonin production. And this gene is silenced when there is light. So light when there shouldn't be light at night, for example. And I mean, I think the statistics say like 90% of people have sleep problems. It, it could be so easy. I actually feel a big difference when I lived in Munich. It's a 4 million people city. And my sleep scores, my aura ring, they are so bad when I'm there. There's all the Wi-Fi and um, EMFs there and um, also the lighting conditions. And when I'm at my parents' home on, in the farm, I have the best sleep ever. It's, you, you can really measure it, how your environment affects your biology. Absolutely. I wish, I do wish people, um, I wish it was a requirement every year for people to take like a week-long camping trip. 
and really recognize what sleeping in nature with the day and night rhythms would do. And that's what it's, it, it's not just woo, right? That you're, you're explaining to us that it's impacting us at that gene epigenetic level, right? It's telling the melatonin that it's dark outside when it's, when it actually is dark outside. And the melatonin says, we'll make a ton of melatonin and that melatonin will put us to sleep. But people don't, I don't think a lot of people realize that melatonin also, once we're asleep, it does so many other things. It doesn't just yeah. put us to sleep, which is why we can't just take exogenous melatonin supplements and think it's doing the same thing for yeah, us. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Just supplementing the things and you can't ups, out supplement a bad life lifestyle. It's, it's not possible. You need to change your lifestyle if you want to become healthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So I want to touch a little bit more. Can, I've not talked with anyone about this yet. And so I'm just intrigued. Can you explain methylation a little bit for people? Yeah. Because they, I, this is something that hasn't come across the podcast yet. Yeah. So methylation is basically adding a methyl group to your DNA or to a toxin or to a hormone, for example, estrogen needs to be methylated. So your body can get rid of it if you have excess estrogen or if you want to alter your genes um, a methyl group is added to the dna and then it's silenced and if it's demethylated it can be read again and this should really work so you should also make sure that you have a real food diet so that you can eat a lot of methyl groups so that your body can have all those methyl donors and um, the unique methyl donor in the body is the so-called SAMI. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I don't know how deep I should get into that. Well, but... go, go ahead. Go, I mean, let, let's, let's go ahead. Let's talk. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Talk about where SAMI, uh, what, how we can make it or mm -hmm. recycle it, if you will, where, where mm -hmm. we can get it, how we can maximize. It. I think it's important for people to recognize this. So very, impo um, very important nutrient for methylation or very important nutrients, uh, folate and uh, vitamin B12. And we need to act from this is also why vegans or vegetarians all, all, um, often have problems with methylation, because you just can get it from animal foods in an adequate amount. And this will be converted to the SAMI. And um, SAMI is the unique methyl donor in the body. So wherever you methylate something, SAMI is needed to um, donor the um, methyl group to that molecule, whatever it is, if it's toxins. This is also when people have a high toxic load, with, for example, mercury, they, they use so many methyl groups that, it, that they miss out on other processes in the body or when you're pregnant and you want to be a mom, your body needs so much folate from nutrition. And um, yeah, most people just think, okay, I will supplement it, but it's not that easy. And um, yeah, we, we need to be aware of, first of all, real food, de-stressing because stress also uses methyl groups. And I know it's so easy to say, reduce your stress, mm -hmm. but like a, medi a, a meditation once a day would be good. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just 10 minutes, a meditation could also alter your genes. And yeah, then we have SAMI and then the methyl group is added and then genes can be read and some genes will be switched off. So silenced the bad, the bad genes. Yeah, that's perfect. So, so just to like give people that recap or just a real world example, I think is this idea that, um, dopamine and serotonin are really, really important brain chemicals, yeah. but we have to be able to methylate them. We have to be able to, re we have to be able to re recycle, basically yeah. recycle them and methylate yeah. them. So you can't just have the buildup of a chemical or else it's like a blockage in the pathway. Everything in the body works in a cycle. It's like this becomes this becomes this, and eventually it becomes the original again, right? In these beautiful yeah. cycles. And what we're seeing these days, probably based on the fact that our environments are way more toxic than they ever were, we're stressed out all the time and we're eating a more nutrient depleted diet we're lacking or we're lacking key parts of this methylation cycle. Yeah. So people come to me and they say, well, I have a, a, an MTHFR defect, right? A gene, a gene yeah. defect. Most people have that. Most people have that. Most we, people have it. We could deal with it so easily, not so easily, but um, even without knowing that you have the MTHFR, for example, 
the mutation you just could support it anyways mm -hmm. without knowing it i always said it because people want to do a dna test and i say some people can't handle the information so like oh i have cancer genes in my family so before you do the test and you can't handle it just support it anyways <laughs> yeah yeah i mean all, all the, the the support is basically become less toxic and eat more nutrient rich foods right so yeah so th that's basically it. <laughs> that's basically it. um so let's let's so let's talk that you said eating uh more folate b12 and mm -hmm. um you know methyl groups right let's call it just call it methyl uh things that become can help contribute to this methylation cycle mm -hmm for you and I who have, who work with us every day, that's pretty obvious, but what would you tell someone they'd say, okay, Laura, well, what, what do you mean? What am I supposed to be eating? So of course, animal products, animal products are high in B vitamins and um, if possible, grass fed and uh, organic. Um, I don't know how the guidelines are there in where you live, but in Germany, it's basically eating organic and grass fed. Mm -hmm. Yep. How is it where you live? Yeah, same thing. In order to, in order to, it, you can have something that is organic. You mm -hmm. can have something that's organic and grass fed, grass mm -hmm. fed and grass finished too, because sometimes they try to get away with saying they, these cows were fed grass, but then they pump them full of <laughs> GMO corn uh, at the end yeah. of their life cycle, right? So, so yeah, I would say your best bet if you're looking for that, it's uh, organic, grass fed, grass finished animal products. Yeah, definitely. And also plants, also plants have a lot of, signals that are important for the body and um yeah as i said if you if you start reading a real food diet especially with organs because organs are high in in that <laughs> um yeah nutrients uh, i eat liver weekly for example and i also recommend it to my clients to every one of my client i say start with eating liver once a week it's so high in nutrients and it's not just like you need only folate for that cycle like you expanded you you convert this to that to that to that there are so many nutrients and enzymes required this is why you just can't supplement one thing you also need choline and um yeah um all the uh, b vitamins and yeah basically everything you you could get from a real food diet and right. if something is still missing then we could talk about supplementing like some people with um, MTHFR could think about supplementing TMG, hmm. um, uh, methyl groups. You could supplement methyl groups. I do that as well. And I realize um, when I take TMG before sleep, my sleep, uh, my readiness score, my our readiness score improves so much. Mm, that so gly I know the glycine, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. My, my body needs it. Okay. And um for, meth for methylation mm -hmm. and to support it because yeah like you said when you have nutrient deficiencies and a high toxic load and you, when you're stressed then it would be beneficial to su um, so yeah supplement the methyl groups absolutely yeah absolutely i found with clients that um i people don't know their true sub, uh symptom burden these days because they're number one, their circadian rhythm and their sleep is so off. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I have this 300 questionnaire, you know, nutrition assessment, and I like clients to take it multiple times because the first thing we'll do is reset your circadian rhythm. And let's say they had 150 symptoms. It'll go down to, you know, then they'll go down to hundred mm -hmm. symptoms. Right. Then we it's tell so it, it's a huge improvement just from getting sleep and yeah. you seeing the sunrise. And then it's like, like you said, it's like, what's your first meal of the day? Like, what is your first meal of the day? Mm -hmm. And let's make that full of nutrients. So, you know, this time of year where I live, it, the first meal of the day is something like, you know, eggs, you know, mm -hmm. local bacon, local sausage, we'll do liver and onions and oh, uh, mushrooms. <laughs> I mean, so good. Amazing. Yeah. And, and, and so then people start to incorporate that for their first meal. And it's like, oh, their symptom burden. Now they only have 50 symptoms, right? It's like, so, wow. and, and things that would, back in the day as nutritionists, I'd been like, oh, well, this requires this supplement and this requires this supplement and this requires, right. And it would, it would have been, I would have been just piling supplements on people. And yes. really you, like you said, you own supplements are there for the very last little bit of optimization. Once you've reached yes. your status, right. Of like, my exactly. sleep is great. My circadian rhythm is strong. I'm eating C 
seasonal local. And now I know that I want to support my MTHFR, especially maybe when you're in Munich, right? When you have a bigger mm-hmm. toxic burden being in a bigger city, then yeah, that, that TMG trimethylglycine is going to be going to put your sleep scores over the edge. And so I think that's an important thing to highlight. I'm, I'm not anti-supplement, I, I, but I'm anti-supplement when you don't have your foundations strong. Yeah, I told you, I was that kind of person who has, I had like 50 supplements mm-hmm. and I had a handful of supplements every morning and it, it wasn't healthy. <laughs> and yeah, then I stopped when I, when I started to research what my body really needs. And now I'm taking like five supplements right. a day. Yeah. So, yeah, so exactly. And the other thing about supplements is like we, nutrients don't work in isolation. There's a reason why mm-hmm. they're packaged a certain way in nature. Like you said, liver, right? Mm-hmm. You know, to, I mean, you, you, there's no way I think you could even get the benefit of a, of a liver supplement, right? It's like, okay, oh. D, the a perfect amount of vitamin D and A and choline and all these other, like all of these synergistic nutrients that work together. Mm-hmm. Just eat the liver, people. Just eat the liver, yeah. right? They, they yeah. come with the information the body needs. They come with all the co-nutrients. We need to convert that nutrient because if you take something isolated, it could actually be harmful. Or for example, my mom just came home uh, yesterday and said, oh, look at that. I have a new multivitamin supplement. I, I looked at it and I said, mom, please just throw it in a bin or bring it back. I hope you still have the bill because at the um vitamins were not methylated they were not in an active form and this is actually harmful if you already have methylation problems because you need even more methyl groups from your diet now yeah absolutely you know it's a a a a multivitamin is not a multivitamin is not a multivitamin so that's where save your money at first right get all your nutrients from your food and then if you want to spend money on a high quality supplement that you need, you'll know exactly what supplement that your body needs in the best form of it as well. Yes, exactly. Um, okay. So what are like, what are other, you talk about toxins, right? I, I haven't talked a ton about to- toxin exposure here either. So where do you feel like people, your clients are getting their biggest toxic burden and what, what are you suggesting to mitigate it? So um, obviously from food, we ingest um this is why i always say go never eat non-organic food because it's full of herbicide pesticides and your body yeah just needs even more support when you eat all that crap and also from the air obviously like in munich there is a very high cadmium load Mm. i researched it in analytics and um yes people are really highly um yeah full of toxins in munich or my clients from there when I when I check it and um, yeah so just make sure you live in a clean environment if possible and um, even if you live on on a farm I found out the people have high um, herbicide and um, fungicide and pesticide loads because yeah the farmers spray it and you breathe it in mm-hmm. so you can't really avoid toxins but you can support your methylation to get rid of those toxins more easily. This is my advice. Yeah, absolutely. So just kind of become aware of it. I, Mm -hmm. I, I like to take walk people through a day in their life. It's like, okay, you wake up in the morning, what personal care products are you using? You know, a lot of those things, products, Yeah, right. The products. And then it's like, okay, walk into your kitchen and what kind of cookware do you have? Right. Or what, what are you using to, to cook in the pan with? Are you using yeah, like we call, vegetable oils? Right, right. They're exactly. So toxic. They're oh. so, as I always say, put it in a bin immediately. I even immediately. have a paper for things they should put in a bin immediately. That's and, great. Yeah. <laughs> and then that, yeah, I guarantee you vegetable oils right up on the, <laughs> the, top, Never, of ever the again. top of that list. Um, but yeah, I, I think people become shocked because it's not necessarily about, um, you know, unless you're working in, in an industry where you're exposed all the time, like can, there's certain construction workers and stuff that we know have toxic loads just because of the construction products that they handle. But, you know, the average person just kind of living their life, going into the, to the office and stuff. It's like, a, it's a slow accumulation. It's a slow, you know, buildup. Yeah of all these toxins, but it matters when you can find mm-hmm. a source, let's say your deodorant and switch it or, or get rid of it, depending, right? You know? get rid of it. I don't use any skincare products at all. Same, same. Just coconut oil if I need it. Yep. <laughs> Nothing else. I don't, uh, I even don't, don't use sunscreen or something. No, I like don't that. either. I know. Just say, 
just expose your body to the sun and respect the sun and yeah build your sunscreen from uh, internally and then you will be fine in the sun because mm -hmm. they're doing more harm than good absolutely that we need we, we need the sun right we absolutely need yeah. the sun and uh sunscreen blocks one of the, some of the most important sun frequencies that our body needs and i do find that m people who who have uh an inflammatory reaction to the sun are just generally inflamed people yeah yes you can see when they're red mm -hmm. and when you're on vacation and the red people walk by it with a beer in their hand or a cocktail <laughs> and i know okay i know what your diet looks like <laughs> right right yeah exactly exactly yeah. exactly so just ge in general uh, unburdening your body little by little of the toxins and the, and the, the heavy metals. So cadmium, have you done much research on that? Like you said, it was not, not much research. Just found oh, that. Why? I'm just curious because like, I was wondering, I, I do see a lot uh, high cadmium over here when people run a toxic metals test. And so wondering what you recommend in terms, do you recommend any sort of detoxification strategies in general? Oh, the, this is so, so um, specific for the yeah. people. Yes. I mostly have different toxins and you know most people detox in a way they shouldn't because they actually get rid of the toxins in their tissue but they re-enter it because they can't get rid of it so it also has to do with the microbiome how the digestion works how they can bind the um the toxins and get rid of them and this is why i always say never ever do a yeah detox protocol that you find on the internet it's mostly doing more harm than good for you Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm of the huge opinion. Uh, this is a Jack Cruz saying where you redox before you detox, you have to support what are called redox pathways. So in the, in the most basic way, that's getting a ton of electrons into your body before you try to detoxify. Right. So you, you get this the sunlight like on your grounding. skin grounding. Yeah. Sunlight oh, on the skin, yeah. all no, that stuff. Record, it's so woo -woo. it's sometimes some some clients just look at me like I should go outside barefoot and I say yes just do it you will realize a difference yeah I know I know I I'm really appreciative for quantum biology because it's given me a language to explain this stuff that I think people have known for thousands and thousands of years frankly that I didn't respect until I got into the science a little more I should have probably respected the fact that these things have been around and healing processes for literally thousands of years I mean, um, we evolved with it. <laughs> Which more scientific research do we need? <laughs> so yeah, but yeah. I was I was the same. I, I also thought, what could be so beneficial of walking barefoot and touching the ground? But it's it's actually just so obvious that we need it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so everyone everyone does want the quick fix of uh, the detox protocol or that like the twenty one day juice cleanse or sugar mm -hmm. detox or whatever. There's a, a, this is this particular episode is going to get released before January 1st and people make their new year's resolutions. And yeah. I want, I want this to really reinforce people that it's not a quick fix. There's not one detox plan. That's going to be life changing. It's a lot of these little things that add up over time. And when you start with light and sleep and circadian rhythm, and then you add in real food, it's, it's a game changer. And a lot of clients can actually stop there, right? You know, it's not like they have to do anything more complex than that. It's so easy. And especially when it comes to weight loss and they say, what can I eat? Um, how can I starve myself? <laughs> and, uh, what can I uh, do in a new year to lose weight? And most people try to eat less and exercise more. And I always recommend the exact opposite, eat more nutrients. It's not about proteins. It's not about fat. It's not about carbs, yes, to some point, but it's about the nutrients you get in. And people come to me and say, I ate this protein pudding for breakfast, and then I had this protein bar for lunch and all that crap, processed crap, and it's so bad. And it, it just makes it worse because they, they can get the protein from their food, but they miss out on all the nutrients they mm -hmm. should get from their diet. Like you said, eggs and bacon for breakfast with some raw carrots, for example. One and of my fave. That's my fave. <laughs> Mine as well. <laughs> no, yeah, and that's excellent. Like it, real, start with start with real food. It's not about macronutrients, right? It's. It, I always tell people that when you got this whole process rolling and you're implementing it, you're actually deriving more of your energy 
from your exposure to nature, your, the sunlight exposure, the fact that your body, when it sleeps can restore itself that much easier that your body from your body, what it's looking for from food is nutrients, not, not macro stuff. It's the micronutrients that your body needs. So okay. then get the biggest bang for your buck. Like you said, do the liver. We do sardines a ton. We do, yeah. you know, tons of seafood. Right. And mm -hmm. so, and those things just so happen to have the most nutrient density mm -hmm. that I have found and are so supportive that when I have a breakfast that, or, you know, I'll have a breakfast of you know, like literally today it was, uh, bacon, eggs and raw carrots, the rainbow carrots. Um, oh. and then my, if I, if I'm hungry when I'm hungry for lunch, right. Which is going to be a little bit, um, I'm going to do some, some salmon with, with some mayonnaise, maybe some onion Amazing. chopped into it. Right. But, and it's so good. And my body loves it now. I don't like the thought of opening the, uh, like a, a lean cuisine, you know, or like a, a frozen meal and putting in the microwave. Number one, I don't have a microwave anymore. But number two, <laughs> the thought of that, it makes me nauseous. Like I have, yeah. like, I would have no problem saying no to that. Whereas before yeah. a lean cuisine lasagna, I would have popped that thing in the microwave, you know, no problem and eaten that for lunch mm -hmm. because it fit a certain number of calories. Mm -hmm. And now it's, it's, once people start to roll with this lifestyle, mm -hmm. their body will guide them. It's not going to be willpower in the same way mm -hmm. as you might think it is. I, I, it's like, that's not willpower for me to say no to. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> it's, it's willpower to eat it. Yes. Oh my God. I, don't I, make I, me. <laughs> no. Uh, even if, if my friends want to go for pizza or something, I'd say, oh, I don't really want to eat it. Not because it's, it's, uh, I don't want it because I know it's bad, but because I don't like the taste anymore and it, it smells bad. Yeah. My body knows that it's bad for me. Right. I don't crave any junk food since I changed my nutrition. And I mean, and listen, it's, I think it's hard for people to, to understand that. Right. But you, you came from literally junk food, uh, -huh. uh junk food, booze and cigarettes, right? Like that was yeah. you. Oh, that was, oh, I know, I know, no, but like, I think it's really important for people to recognize yeah. that, like that the body has this built, mm -hmm. the body is always looking to, to become better based on the signals you give it. And once you give it all the signals that it needs from the light to the sleep, to the food, to the nutrients, mm -hmm. it, it will, it, you'll get a visceral response. You'll get like a, a, a gross response to things that aren't healthy for you anymore. I get a gross response to what, to the idea of watching a, a movie at, late at night. I get a gross Me too. Me too. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to stay up for that. I don't even own a TV. <laughs> Good for you. Kudos to you. My husband needs his football. Okay. He needs his football, <laughs> but we, we have it protected, right? We've got circa circadian protected. So that makes me really, really okay. happy. <laughs> yeah, no, but I know exactly what you mean. It's you don't crave that unhealthy lifestyle anymore mm -hmm. and you, you stay away from it. And the same goes for relationships. If you have um, even relationships and social bonds with people that are toxic for you, alter your gene expression and just cut them out. Let's talk about thoughts and emotions. Cause you touched on that a little bit, but I don't think people, I, again, I think this falls under the category of woo, right? Like people don't recognize that their thoughts and the emotions that they surround themselves with the people they surround themselves with actually have the ability to alter their DNA. Yes. It's, it's basically that. So, um, if you're in a bad mindset all day, you will feed also the expression of bad genes to put it simple. And, um, it's 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 hard science actually there are so there's so many research on it um you can look on pubmed if you're interested and um yeah for example if you start meditating you start to alter your genes in a positive way and to de-stress your body and um to support methylation and your body will not need so many methyl groups when you have stress for example and you can handle it even better um, you will produce more dopamine, for example, and all those yeah, happy hormones and neurotransmitters you need. And in this way, you can support it very good. This science is called psychoepigenetics. Oh, so, psychoepigenetics. Oh, yeah. yeah, search that up yeah. on PubMed. Oxytocin. Oxytocin. It's so important. Just hack a person every day. I mean, it's good to have a family. Um, and you will all benefit from it. And I also hug my friends when I'm, when I'm out with friends. I just hug them very often because I know I, I need that oxytocin. And there was actually this king back then who did that 
um, study on the children and they had everything they need, food, light, everything they need to survive, but they had no love from their parents, no physical contact and they all died. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I feel like I thought that I think I read an article, uh, this has to be 10 years ago now that we need physical contact with like seven people every day, or not necessarily seven oh. people at seven times, at least every day. It's like a requirement wow. for health. This is also why at the moment where we're so isolated and um, not have so much contact with people anymore and everyone is on distance. Yeah. Um, psychological diseases rise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is very sad. It is. I was just talking with a mom um, two days ago whose whose sons are uh, her sons are like twenty one and twenty five, right? And and so right in the, the, it like in this age range of people who have really been around social media their mm -hmm. whole lives and uh, get a there's an addictive quality to being on the screens, right? They get a hit of dopamine, and so yeah, the hit of dopamine without though the almost like without the the antidote, right? Like you, when we, when we get a hit of dopamine, because we're with someone and we get that joy, like it's, it's different. It's balanced. You get the oxytocin, you get, yeah. you get, you even get infrared, right? You get like a, a, a heat exchange from hugging someone personally. Yeah. And so with social media these days, the incidence of anxiety and depression and suicide that I have seen go mm -hmm. up, it's, it's scary. In a, in, mm -hmm. in a particular age range. And it's, it, a lot of it has to do with the fact that what you're getting when you're staring at this screen is pure, a pure dopamine hit as mm -hmm. if you were taking heroin and you yeah. need more and more and more and more of it. And so you stay up later and later into the night and watch more and more and more. And eventually you, you get to the point where you can't feel fulfilled anymore. And it's, it's a yes. very, very sad state. And so, uh, if anyone has the ability to be in physical contact with someone else, like don't underestimate how important that physical make it a priority. Is. Yes. Make it a priority. It's, it's a nutrient. It's basically mm -hmm. like a nutrient and you can be deprived of physical contact as well. And a uh, hack for me was a friend recommended it to me to turn off all my social media not notifications, even on WhatsApp and just to use the phone when I, when I, go into the app and use it and not when when it pops up you always have a dopamine hit and then you will automatically yeah click on your phone and be on social media again and social media is designed to keep you as long as possible on the platform to sell you as many things as possible i mean we both use instagram mm -hmm. it's nice to connect with people but as you said it's also very addictive and i also do some time uh, days off completely days off just yep yeah, just spend time with friends, reconnection. I think there's nothing worse with spending a time with friends and they're like this all the time. And mm -hmm. like reconnection is much more important than connecting on social media. It's just not the real thing. Absolutely. So that's a great recommendation. Turning notifications off. That's been huge for me. Frankly, I didn't notice the difference, but I didn't know what I was doing, but I got a new phone and the notifications were already off and it's, it's awesome. I don't know how yeah. to turn them on. I'm not going to turn them on. I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's easy to set my phone down and just forget about it because like, I don't hear that ding, ding, ding. Whereas before yes. when you hear that ding, 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 it's like, Ooh, what's, mm -hmm. what, what's someone saying? What's someone saying? And so, yeah, was, absolutely. The same. So addicted. I was, Oh, there, there's something popping up Instagram. And then I'm caught in the app again. And yeah, it's just a real game changer. It was a real game changer for me to turn all the notifications off. Agreed. Agreed. And then another game changer for me was making my screens as red as possible. Yes, so, with the app, with the mm -hmm, yeah. Do you, yeah. So I, I use the twilight app, um, for, for my Android and then the mm -hmm. iPhone, you kind of, I think there's like an accessibility that you have to go through. If anyone wants that, just, just mm -hmm. get a hold of me. I can show, I, we can share that. Um, but that makes a huge difference when you're not getting certain light signals into your brain, you're not getting the same dopamine hit. So again, it's easier to, even though social media, like you said, that endless scrolling and always mm -hmm. the algorithms are always trying to keep you attracted, attracted, attracted when you don't have the notifications and you don't have that blue light behind it, it's easy to say, okay, now it's time for me. I can, I can put this down. Like it's there's there's less of a, like you're prying a toy away from a two-year-old, right? There's, there's less yeah. of that uh, when you have those two things going on. So those are excellent suggestions. And also, you know, just along with the, the touch, I know people who have 
you know, uh, gotten pets, you know, animals mm -hmm. uh, and they're yes. it's like, don't underestimate how the companionship yes. of a, of a dog or a cat or something like that, actually that can boost, boost that oxytocin too, which is so cool. Yeah. Or maybe just talked about it before. Um, um, it's not only the, the dopamine that hits it's also cortisol all of the time mm. blue light i mean in the morning it's good to have a cortisol spike but um after that we should really reduce it and like you said you can use the app or blue light blocking glasses at night mm. or the dark mode at least um on on whatsapp or instagram because the cortisol will disrupt also your sex hormones like for women uh, progesterone estrogen for men it's testosterone and it will actually steal the progesterone to make even more cortisol and people wonder why they are infertile or have um, PCOS or irregular cycles or uh, testosterone deficiency, but it actually has to do something with your phone. If you use it 24 mm seven. -hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent point. I don't think most people make the connection that cortisol is a, is in the same family of hormones as all of our sex hormones mm -hmm. and the, and the body wants to divvy it up, right? It's not about necessarily just always making, making more. It's called the, what, what is it? The pregnenolone steel syndrome, mm -hmm. right? We're pregnenolone, our master, like the hormone that can become testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, all these hormones that we need to make babies and have a high libido they're gone. Right. That's, yeah. that's, uh, what was it? I, what is it called? There's something, there was a syndrome that was, I think it was called celibacy syndrome. I haven't researched it in three oh, or four years. It was, I was, it was happening over in Asia where, uh, you know, adolescents and, uh, you know, teens and young adults were losing all sex drive and it was coming in conjunction with blue light toxicity. Really? Yes. And so I just, I remember hearing about it three or four years ago and I researched mm -hmm. a little bit then and I was fascinated and it was like, people weren't understanding why this was happening, but you, I, I think, I think the pathway is becoming delineated. And I think you hit the nail on the head when your body is stealing yeah. your sex hormones because yeah. you're in front of a blue lit screen all the time, you're not going to have a sex drive. You're not going to have a desire. And that's not normal for young, young people should have, I, I mean, like yeah, when they should, right. That's a healthy thing to be able yes. to have. So, and, and I think what we're seeing, like you said, with the infertility and the, I, I hear people with low libido all the time, all of these can be a direct result of having just too much blue lit artificial yeah. blue light in our lives, especially at the wrong time of day. I actually found a study about it. If you expose yourself when you're a man to bright daylight, you can yeah speed up your libido again. Oh, and you basic like expo <laughs> expose all of yourself to yes. oh, yeah 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 that yes. makes sense. And also in front of the red light device, if you have one, just expose yourself completely Perfect. naked to natural light sequences and go out in bright light. And um, also, I mean, most people already have mitochondrial dysfunction mm -hmm. where pregnenolone is produced. And then they even make it worse with that um, pregnenolone steal from cortisol. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, yeah, a bad, bad cycle therein. Nature, I mean, again, back to nature, it sets it up perfectly, right? Because cortisol, we, our brain makes it naturally for us in the morning with the morning natural burst of light, right? Mm -hmm. That we get, and then it goes away or it should go away. Mm -hmm. And then eventually when it's darkness, melatonin rises. And I don't think people realize too, hormones are the same way. We make a whole bunch of those steroid hormones in the morning that mm -hmm. our body then says, oh yeah, you know, Carrie, Carrie can make a baby. Let's give her a bunch of, you know, progesterone or whatever. Like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, and then, and then when the brighter sunlight comes, that actually is supposed to help me kind of like turn off or recycle or get rid of unnecessary steroid hormones. So someone who comes to me and they say they have low libido mm -hmm. and estrogen dominance, like these are, these are terms or even like, um, uh, uh, adrenal fatigue, right? These are all kind of modern terms, like functional medicine terms that have a place, mm -hmm. but when it comes back to it, it's the wrong light signals. You're either getting the wrong light signals or you're missing out on light frequencies in your body. Yes. Yes, definitely. Or also nutrients like yes. vitamin A, it's so important or cholesterol, but, um, I have a friend and a friend, a friend of a friend and, um, he has problems with it. And I said, mm, could it have something to do since you're vegan and you avoid cholesterol at all costs? I mean, I know food cholesterol is not blood cholesterol, but it still has to do with it something. And you need the cholesterol also to synthesize those vitamins. 
and people forget about it. Or copper. Copper is so important also for your thyroid because without adequate thyroid, you can't convert cholesterol into the sex hormones. And most people I know, or most of my clients have thyroid problems. And this is also a thing. I try to speed up the thyroid again with the right food and stop um, yeah, eating anti-metabolic food like vegetable oils, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just speed up the thyroid again. But I mean, it's also a symptom of the body to slow down thyroid because it also converts all those nutrients. And if, you, if your body isn't provided with enough nutrients, it's actually a smart thing to slow down the thyroid because you, yeah, it yeah. lacks nutrients and it just wants to save them for important things. Right. So it's like, so your body, it's your body's way of saying, no, you, you're not ready to make a baby, right? You're not ready. No. You don't have the nutrient yeah. status to make a baby. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for a fact, just, just trading notes on there. I there's a, I think seafood is one of the best things people can eat to support exactly. their thyroid. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Your is so ex uh, important for it as well. And all Celine and sink and yeah, we could name so many, yeah. <laughs> yes. but um, yeah, cool. seafood is a real game changer. Awesome. Awesome. Laura, anything else you want to share? You know, I feel like we've given people a lot of cool stuff to think about today. Um, if I would share one thing, just keep always in mind that you can influence your gene expression with every thought, with the food, with sleep, with everything you do. And just always ask yourself, will this support the way of life I want or will it harm it? And that's beautiful. Instead of looking at it from a, is this going to fit my macronutrient calculations for the day? Right. Yeah. Is like, is this supportive or is this, is this leading my body in the direction I want my body mm -hmm. to go? Right. It's beautiful. Definitely. It's a beautiful, I mean, it, it keeps it simple. It absolutely keeps it simple. And the thing about it too, is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. It just, no. you just have to make more good choices than poor yes. choices. And just that try to be up. better every day, mm -hmm. just to be, try to be better every day. That's it. Beautiful, beautiful. So Laura, where can people find you if they're interested in, in more about what you have to say? On, on Instagram or on, on Ryan's website. Yeah, perfect. So uh, on Instagram, she is Miss Biohacker. So great page to follow. She, uh, she posts some very interesting stuff. I love it. It always, uh, it's thought provoking, which is so appreciated these days. And then, um, I, I got connected with you also through Ryan Carter, who is on live Vitae, Right. And so I know you do some wonderful like blogs and posts and stuff for him as well. Yes, yes, exactly. I work with Ryan. Yes. Awesome. So cool. Well, Hey, it was a pleasure chatting with you. I thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And I, I just love chatting with you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Bye-bye.